Today's lesson is Turkish treats, a tour of Turkish desserts. Hi, everybody. I'm Roger, and I'm Helen, and we're going to be talking about sweet food in today's lesson. Some people do like sweet foods, like cake and candy and ice cream and pie and things like that. But of course, a dessert is something that you eat after a meal. At least in Western countries, it might be eaten at other times in different countries. But we're talking about some Turkish desserts or sweet treats. Yes, and I love Turkish treats or Turkish desserts personally because, well, they're very different from French desserts or European desserts, which usually contain a lot of cream and butter. But with Turkish treats, you don't have all that cream and butter. You basically have nuts and honey and just sugar or you know sugar water, pistachios, and it's a different kind of dessert, and I really like it. Where have you had Turkish desserts? Before or Turkish food, for that matter. Well, even in Taipei, there is a coffee shop that serves Turkish desserts, and in other occasions, like at the airport in Istanbul, sometimes when I have to fly through there. Okay, that would be a good place to get Turkish food, and I believe there are some Turkish people here in Taiwan who have opened restaurants and stands and things like that. I think there's a fella out in Danshui that serves Turkish ice cream, if I'm not mistaken. But、uh, yeah, we're going to be talking about Turkish treats in today's lesson, and we're going to have a tour of Turkish desserts. So let's get to it, everybody. Let's listen to the first part of our lesson, and we'll be right back. Turkish treats: a tour of Turkish desserts. From its history to its culture, there are many reasons to love Turkey. But for those of us with a sweet tooth, there's another more appealing reason. Turkey boasts an abundance of delicious desserts that are well worth getting acquainted with. 大家好，第一部分我们可以看到单词 abundance。这个字是名词，指的是大量、充足或是丰富。例如 ，In France, you can find an abundance of wine and cheese. 你可以在法国找到大量的酒和起司。或者 ，This region of the country produces an abundance of rice. 该国的这个区域出产大量的稻米。另外，去掉这个字的字尾 ce， 再加上 t， 就变成形容词 abundant。举例来说。Toby found a hidden lake where fish were abundant. Toby 发现一座隐秘的湖，里面有很多鱼。再举一个例子 ，The region's abundant sunshine makes it ideal for growing wine grapes. 这个地区充足的日照，使它成为种植酿酒葡萄的理想地点。接下来我们看到形容词 acquainted， 它的意思是了解的、熟悉的或是认识的。例如 ，It took some time for Will to get acquainted with everyone in the office. Will 花了好一段时间来熟悉办公室里的每个人。再举一个例子 ，Leo invited Rose out for coffee so that the two of them could get better acquainted. Leo 邀请 Rose 出来喝咖啡，好让他们可以更了解彼此。From its history to its culture, there are many reasons to love Turkey. But for those of us with a sweet tooth, there's another more appealing reason. Turkey boasts an abundance of delicious desserts that are well worth getting acquainted with. Now, looking at the first part of this passage, the first sentence, we are aware that Turkey has a very long history—a history that's lasted more than a thousand years—and that it has a very rich culture that has influenced a lot of countries in the Middle East. So, one aspect of Turkish culture is Turkish food, which is very famous and very particular. And one aspect of Turkish food that many people love are Turkish desserts. Indeed. So again, desserts could be the sweet food you have after a meal, or just something you eat during the day. So yes, indeed, there are lots of reasons to love Turkey, and we've got a range of things from its history to its culture. Because of those things, yeah, you should really be in love with Turkey. And、uh, Turkey does not have anything to do with the North American bird that is slaughtered for festivals there, Thanksgiving and Christmas. And、uh, here it goes on to say, but for 
those of us with a sweet tooth, there's another more appealing reason. Turkey boasts an abundance of delicious desserts that are well worth getting acquainted with. So, of course, if you like sweet food and you probably eat too much of it, we could say that you have a sweet tooth. I'm guilty of this. I have a sweet tooth. I tend to like to eat sweet things way too much. I just love a pie and ice cream and cake and stuff like that. And so, yes, if you do have a sweet tooth, well, then you have another reason to like turkey, and it's appealing. Something that you might like. That's because turkey boasts an abundance of delicious desserts. An abundance of something is just a large amount of something, especially if it's more than enough. Of course, when you have a harvest, you want to have an abundance of food when you harvest. Yes, you can say, for instance, that Taiwan has an abundance of convenience stores all over the island, or Taiwan has an abundance of mountain trails where people can go hiking. So Turkey has an abundance of delicious desserts, and these desserts are well worth getting acquainted with. When you get acquainted with something, you are making an effort to learn about that thing to get to know it better. You can also say. That you want to get acquainted with all of the workers in the office. If you're starting a new job at that office, you want to get acquainted with your coworkers, with the procedures of working at that place, so that you'll feel more at home and you know what to do. Exactly. So you want to get acquainted with these delicious desserts, especially if you have a sweet tooth. And even if you don't have a sweet tooth, they're probably still worth trying. Okay. That brings us to the end of the first part of our lesson for today. Let's move on now to the second part. One of Turkey's most famous desserts is actually named after it. Turkish delight, also known as lokum, is a chewy, colorful, and soft treat. It's also full of flavor, taking its taste from dried fruits, nuts, and of course, plenty of sugar. Not only is this dessert a favorite around the globe, it also has an interesting history. Legend has it that Turkish delight was invented by some of Turkey's best chefs as a means to secure peace between a powerful sultan's many wives, and remarkably, it worked. 第二部分，我们看到片语 legend has it that 指的是传说或是据说点点点。例如 ，legend has it that a monster lives under this bridge。传说有一只怪兽住在这座桥下。或是 ，legend has it that the city was originally founded by a pair of gods。据说那座城市最初是由两位天神创立的。最后，我们看到单词 remarkably 这个字是副词，意思是不可思议的、非常或是格外。例如 ，remarkably, no one was injured in the accident. 不可思议的是，没人在这场事故中受伤。或是 ，Penny did poorly in school, but grew up to become remarkably successful. Penny 在学校时表现很差，但她长大后却格外的成功。另外，去掉这个字的字尾 y， 再加上 e， 就变成形容词 remarkable， 表示引人注目的或是令人惊叹的。例如。I've heard that Switzerland is a country of remarkable beauty. 我听说过瑞士是一个非常美丽的国家。又或者说 ，It is remarkable how James always manages to get lost. James 总是有办法迷路，令人叹为观止。So we're going to look at one type of Turkish dessert. Now, one of Turkey's most famous desserts is actually named after it. So we're talking, of course, about Turkish delight. So Turkish delight is named after the country Turkey. When you name something after something else, or when you name a baby after somebody else, you are giving that thing or that baby the same name. I could say that I named my daughter. After my mother. Now here, Turkish delight is one of Turkey's most famous desserts, and the word delight here refers to something that gives you a great pleasure in sharing it, and eating it, and experiencing it. Exactly. Lots of dishes in the world are called something delight, which means it is a delight to eat it. It's also known as lokum. 
and it is a chewy, colorful, and soft treat. So if something's chewy, that means you have to chew it with your teeth a little longer than usual. Okay, some desserts are chewy. You need to take、uh, several different bites. You need to chew it for a little bit longer. But hey, that makes it more fun, and it creates an interesting texture in your mouth. So it's chewy. It's also colorful. So it has lots of color to it. And of course, if food looks nice, then it tends to have a psychological effect on you, and you'll enjoy it more. And then it's also soft. Okay, so it's not hard and crunchy. It's soft and chewy. Hmm. It sounds like it's something that goes really well with Turkish tea or coffee. Certainly, it contains a lot of sugar, so you'll need to drink something when you're enjoying lokum. And、uh, I imagine lokum as something that resembles gelatin, like gelatin candy that we are more familiar with. Mm -hmm. Gelatin candy is quite chewy, so you might want to try this. And maybe there are some restaurants or coffee shops in Taiwan somewhere that serve lokum. It's also full of flavor, taking its taste from dried fruits, nuts, and of course, plenty of sugar, as you said. So those are some of the ingredients there: dried fruits, different kinds of fruit that has been dried. It's got nuts, maybe like almonds and walnuts and stuff like that. And of course, you got lots of sugar in there. So be careful. If you are diabetic, and moving on here to the next sentence, it says, "Not only is this dessert a favorite around the globe, it also has an interesting history." So there's that pattern again. Not only, but also, you don't have to put the "but" in there in this particular case. Not only is it a favorite around the world, but it also, or also, it has an interesting history. So yes, indeed, this dessert is enjoyed all around the world. But again, it also has an interesting history. So you can not only eat it, but you can also learn about its history and where it came from. Right. So another example of the pattern, not only but also, or not only also, is I can say my new apartment is not only inexpensive, but it's also near the MRT. That's very convenient indeed. You don't have to drive a car or look for a parking spot. So, in any case, here, yes, the dessert is not only famous around the globe, but it also has an interesting history. Legend has it that Turkish delight was invented by some of Turkey's best chefs as a means to secure peace between a powerful sultan's many wives, and remarkably, it worked. So, according to legend, or legend has it, that just means there is this story about it. A legend is kind of an old story that may or may not be true. This is a legend, an old story that has been passed from generation to generation, and people say that it was invented by some of the best chefs in Turkey, and they did that as a way or a means. To secure peace between the wives of a sultan. So here, if you secure peace, that means you guarantee that you're going to have this thing. Secure here just means to make sure something is safe and still and tight, and it's not going to fall apart or it's not going to loosen. For example, you need to secure your windows or to secure your doors before a typhoon hits. Right, so this type of dessert was used to secure peace between the sultan's many wives. So a sultan is a leader, a leader in many Muslim countries. So a sultan would be the equivalent of a king or an emperor in Europe. But in the Muslim countries, they don't call them kings; they call these people sultans. And sultans were able to have many wives, and these wives often argued, got into fights because maybe. Maybe they were fighting for power, and these desserts, these treats, were used to calm the ladies down so that they wouldn't fight with each other. Now that's a legend. We don't know if that's actually true. That's why the sentence begins with "legend has it." You can also say "rumor has it" or "word has it." Doesn't have the same meaning, but it's used in the same pattern. Indeed. So sometimes when women are scrapping with each other, when they're arguing, sometimes the best solution is to give them something. 
something sweet to eat, and they sit down and they act as if they have been friends all their life. So it must have worked. Here it says, and remarkably, it worked. So if something is remarkable, that just means it's worth noting. It's worth paying attention to because maybe it shouldn't be so simple. These wives are fighting over the sultan. They're angry. They're throwing insults at each other. They're trying to claw each other with their fingernails and things like that. But hey, it's a miracle that this dessert actually worked. The ladies actually enjoyed the dessert and decided to become the best of friends. Okay, that brings. Brings us to the end of the second part of our lesson for today. Let's move on now to the third and final part. Of course, no discussion of Turkey's desserts would be complete without mentioning baklava. Typically made with dozens of layers of phyllo pastry topped with nuts, baklava comes in a variety of shapes and styles. And although you can find baklava in other countries. No country takes their baklava as seriously as Turkey. After all, most historians assert that baklava was, in fact, invented there. Of course, no discussion of Turkey's desserts would be complete without mentioning baklava. So, if we're going to talk about Turkey's desserts, then we have to talk about baklava because if we don't talk about it, then our discussion would not be complete. So that suggests that baklava is a very important dessert, and indeed it is. It's one of the most famous of Turkish desserts, even though it exists in other countries as well, like. Egypt and Israel and other Middle Eastern countries. Right. So, of course, no discussion would be complete without something. We often use that pattern. No something without something means it wouldn't be complete unless you had that thing. So we could say, no trip to Hong Kong is complete without a ride on the Star Ferry. Everybody likes to take the Star Ferry when they go to Hong Kong, and no discussion of Turkey's desserts would be complete. Without talking about baklava, now let's talk about this. Typically made with dozens of layers of phyllo pastry topped with nuts, baklava comes in a variety of shapes and styles. So this sentence tells us a little bit about how it's made. It's got lots and lots of layers of something called phyllo pastry. Pastry, of course, is something used in baking, and these layers are topped with nuts. Different kinds of nuts on the top of it. That sounds rather crunchy and smooth and soft at the same time. And of course, if you talk about it having lots of different shapes and different flavors and different styles, then we say it comes in those styles or shapes, etc. If you want to buy a new car, for example, the、uh, car dealer will say, "Well, this model comes in red. It comes in gray. It comes in black, etc." Right, and phyllo pastry, which is used for making baklava as well as many other Middle Eastern desserts, can also be pronounced phyllo pastry. And here, even though it's spelled P H Y L L O, phyllo or phyllo can also be spelled F I L O. Indeed. Okay, so there you have it. It's kind of how it's made, and of course there are different kinds, and I suppose they have different kinds in different regions of Turkey. And moving on now, it says, and although you can find baklava in other countries, no country takes their baklava as seriously as Turkey. So, like a lot of food, when you travel the world, you can find that kind of food. But of course, getting the food in the original country is much better. You can eat Japanese food here in Taiwan or in the United States or in Europe, but the best Japanese food, of course, is going to be in Japan itself. Right. After all, most historians assert that baklava was, in fact, invented there. So historians who are specializing in food are saying that baklava was invented in Turkey. They assert this fact. When you assert something, you're stating it firmly. You're saying this is definitely true. So I could also say, as an example, the man asserted his innocence to the police. He stated it boldly that he was innocent. 
And a related word is assertive. Of course, for some of our listeners out there, you might be starting your careers. You're still in high school, or you're in university, and you're going to go look for your first job. But、uh, you need to be assertive. Okay, you need to be kind of aggressive. You need to contact lots of different people, and you need to send out lots of different applications in order to get your dream job. So you need to assert yourself, or to be a Assertive in your efforts, and yes, indeed, lots of historians claim or they assert that baklava was in fact invented in Turkey. So, as a result, the best baklava is available in Turkey itself. Hey, head to your travel agent right away. Okay, that brings us to the end of our explanation for today. Let's listen now to Hanny. Hello, students. Hello, everyone. 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 Hello, 好，那这边也顺便补充几个跟牙齿相关的片语。第一个补充的是 tooth and nail， 字面意思是牙齿和指甲，它其实有竭尽全力的意思哦。那我们可以用 fight tooth and nail 来描述做事全力以赴、奋力拼搏的意思。好，第二个补充的是 sink one's teeth into 点点点。那么 sink。它当动词有陷入、沉入的意思。那这个片语字面意思就是把牙齿沉入了什么什么，可以用来指大口吃、大口咬、大啖食物的那种意思。像 He sank his teeth into the apple， 他大口咬那个苹果。好，另外这个片语其实也可以引申用来表达全心全意投入某事物，卯足全力、热切的去做某事。好，第三个补充的是 like pulling teeth， 这个片语很好理解，字面意思呢就是像拔牙一样嘛。那它不是用来表达很痛哦，而是指说非常困难的情形，像拔牙一样困难。举例来说 ，getting him to admit his mistakes。Was like pulling teeth. 要他承认自己的错啊，是很难的。好，在第四个补充的是 grit one's teeth. Grit, G R I T， 当名词表示毅力，当动词呢，通常就会搭配 teeth 去表达说把牙齿咬紧的意思。像 He gritted his teeth in anger. 他气得咬牙切齿。好，那这个片语呢，也可以引申表达咬紧牙关，在面对困难挑战时展现。出决心和勇气的那种语义。好，第五个补充的是 a kick in the teeth， 字面意思是牙齿被踢到，它是引申用来表达突如其来的打击或者是挫折。举例来说 ，getting fired was a kick in the teeth for him。对他来说，被开除啊是个突如其来的打击。好，那么再来课文第三部分有一个句子提到说 ，baklava comes in a variety of shapes and styles。果仁蜜饼有各式各样的形状和风格。那句子里面用到 come in， 它是表达有什么什么选择，以什么样的形式贩售。come in 后面是常常会接颜色啊、尺寸啊、款式、种类等等的名词来表达某物品它有哪些不同种类样式可以选择。举例来说 ，the sweater comes in many different colors。这款毛衣有许多不同颜色可以选哦。好，以上是今天的重点整理，我们回顾今天的单词吧。Acquainted. Tom quickly became acquainted with his new neighbors after moving into a new apartment. Delight. The taste of the delicious dish was truly a delight. Secure. The reporter worked hard to secure the trust of her source in the government. Remarkably. The play was remarkably bad.
a disaster that the audience would talk about for days after. Assert. Katie asserted that her plan would work, though considerable data indicated that it would not. Well, everyone, today's article has come to an end, and I sure hope you enjoy reading along with us. I am Helen. I am Roger. See, See you, you next time. time.